Actually, that is really handy. I think, yeah, look, an Admiral. That gives me sight range as well as letting my boats go into the sea, into the ocean. That's really handy. Oh, we can, we can explore way better now. I'd kind of parked a lot of my boats because they were a bit useless, but now, now we can go out and find some even more. I mean, unfortunately, my embarked units can't get out, but it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll find a way to make those useful. I've also realized that there is a bit of a synergy here I didn't notice at the time. Granada lets you put Alcazars down. Now, they give you culture as well as science equal to half of a tile's appeal, but my unique improvement increases the appeal of tiles around it by plus two. That's an extra science. So I can get two science, two culture Alcazars pretty much on demand, which is amazing. I don't remember the last time I got to use a synergy like that. So that's, that's brilliant. Mongoli have already got cavalry. Oh my Lord, they're all the way over here. How did you do that? Oh my Lord. Don't ask, don't ask. We won't like the answer. <laughs> I get the, the distinct feeling. I'm not going to like the answer. Oh, increases trade route capacity though. There's a good merchant on the way. I'm actually the only person getting merchant points. That's surprising. There is the ancestral hall finished. And with that, I really am going to start thinking about getting Pingala in. In your pop, into my city. It's a 10 population city. There are some very decent promotions on Pingala that would very much help. That's good in my capital, right? With that building, we can start to pop settlers out a little quicker now. I've got apprenticeship. I'm tempted to go for mass production now for education and the universities, but also just for some other bits and pieces in my empire. So we'll, we'll keep on the advantages there. Oh, look at that. Another shrine. Get myself a temple. It's a lot of good gold. Yeah, to spend my gold on things like this. And lighthouse as well. That means we've got another trader available to us now. The world is round, everyone. Believe me, I didn't fall off it, I promise. Republican Legacy is back. I can pick that up later. Yeah, for now, I don't, I'm not going to worry about it, but that's such a good... good. Oh, actually, it would make my cities pretty much universally happy. That's 10% extra yield on everything. Right, Natural Philosophy, as fun as that is, putting Republican Legacy back in. Yeah, look, my science barely went down. Always keep your cities happy if you can. Not always you can, but if you can, you should do it. Oh, Nalanda popped in and Kamasi has appeared. Very interesting, very interesting. Well, I might as well pick up Johannesburg as another city-state because I can actually get a decent trade route into my capital and to get the extra production using that. So we'll, we'll give that a go. My next to settle. Uh, should we finally fill in that space or do I just keep sending settlers out to the great unknown? Kind of quite quickly coming up against a bit of a, a, a sort of head, self headbutt. Can't really push out any further than we are right now. When Pingala's ready, researcher. Immediately, let's get researcher. Build a trebuchet, build a man at arms. I can do a man at arms. That's my immortal. You're already obsolete, friend. Alcazar's in my capital. They're very good. Not really being worked, but they will be very good. Um, where's my best trade route capacity now? Sparta's a good one. Ankara? It's not a bad little route, and it will give me extra production from Singapore, I believe, if I just have a look now at how this all works itself out. Outgoing trade routes plus three. Resources plus four. Did I lose Singapore? Oh, I'm so sorry. It's, it's Johannesburg. I'm totally getting that wrong. I thought it was Singapore. Never mind. It's still very useful. <laughs> Check out this. Seven appeal on that tile. So the Alcazar is worth three science per turn. Yay. Actually, I've built a few of these and it's providing more of my science per turn than I, than I would probably like to admit. But uh, don't, don't worry. It's fine. Spreading my religion now to Mongolia. My missionaries are on the way. Doing good. And speaking of, I can get a second apostle. What I'm really hoping is that at some point Yerevan pops up. If Yerevan pops up, then we're uh, we're going to have some fun because we can pick our promotions and we can just get lots and lots of debaters or apostles that specialize in removing religion, something like that. I'm going to make a bit of a wild play here. I'm going to trade a bunch of my gold per turn for gold up front, quite a bit of it, so that I can force purchase Bi Sheng. Now, this engineer allows you to build more districts in a city which in itself is really, really good. But it means I can do it in the capital and get things like the campus, get myself a diplomatic square going, just make the trade routes even better. I, I, I think I'm fairly happy with that as a strategy. It, it, I'm losing a little bit of gold, but it will all come back. I'm 10 turns off the mausoleum in my northern city. I'm building great lighthouse. Most of the naval wonders are totally up for grabs, which I'm finding very strange. But, you know, if they're up for grabs, don't complain. Having one extra movement on all naval units, that is not a bad problem to have. So take it. 
Always take it. Look at the sparkling under the water there. That's really, really cool. Uh, plus, this is kind of, it stops the AI from getting it. If, if your boats are faster than the AIs, the naval combat begins to get very, very simple in comparison to if they're faster than you. As you can see, look, the settler moves faster as well. So this actually will help me to settle a bit quicker. There's an opportunity here for me to steal an aqueduct, a theatre square, a city with a great bath in it. The loyalty in this city is terrible. And I have the opportunity to settle on this tile there to increase pressure even more this is definitely what i'm going to be doing we have an up yeah I i'm going to take this city absolutely going to take this city if i can religious emergency do i want to no i'm not going to put that through myself but i might join in with it you never know oh pingala is now established by the way i'm up to 83 science and 127 culture per turn in terms of the actual stats of where we are dead last on science three texts behind uh babylon is on 37 and i'm on 21 so that's 16 texts behind babylon in terms of Mongolia, they're on 28 text, my 21, 7 text ahead of me. Germany's winning the culture victory and is actually starting to pick up tourists. Domination, I believe, is just being won by my ally to the north because they have more troops than anyone else, which is fine. Religion is boring, diplomacy is boring. So far, everything has kind of just stagnated a little bit, and we don't mind that. That's absolutely fine. I did just realize, though, I could be making alliances. I'm going to try and make a military alliance with my very powerful ally to the north. Babylon, I think you can probably drag me along technologically for a bit. So, yeah, nine gold per turn, they'll give me for that. That's wonderful. I'm going to let the alliance of Mongolia expire, or the friendship expire with them. I just don't trust economic with germany i think we'll go religious with congo yep for now that's a good assortment of things oh if you has a relic yes 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 yes. this is exactly what i want oh it's worth the 500 gold bam because i have relic queries don't forget so that's 12 faith 24 tourism but that faith gets translated into science culture and gold oh that's wonderful to see I need to start getting yeah I, I want as many relics as we can get and that's the that's the start and hopefully the first of many do I want to... Oh, if we do this, Kabasa to Eastern Orthodoxy. Where? I mean, how close even is that? I don't think I even know where any of this stuff is. I'm going to join in on it anyway, just because I get a relic if it works and I don't have to do anything to actually get it to work. So Mongolia are settling cities to try and alleviate the pressure, but it's not going to work because I'm also settling cities to make the pressure even worse. All I need in this city is a trader, which I'm going to be able to get in pretty soon because we've got harbors being finished in my two new cities, which is lovely. How did this missionary just get creep through? Don't do this. Look, I'm trying very much to catch you blindsided i need one more apostle i need one more apostle i don't have enough units to get the kills at the moment which is a bit frustrating if i can remove this Istanbul's religion i'm gonna feel a little better about where things are right now that was humanism by the way up into the renaissance era on civic i'm so far behind ludwig is already in the industrial era just cruising around doing what ludwig does best Oh, you think you can run away, do you, Mr. Missionary? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, also, grievances are going to happen, Ottomans. I'm very sorry, but uh, it's just going to happen. This is where we try and maintain the alliance with them whilst I remove their religion. It's, uh, it's a bit sneaky, but it's something I'm going to do. Found the pyramids, by the way. Is that Mongolia converted now? It might be one, two, three, four, five, six cities of their 11. Yeah, they are now converted to my religion. What that will mean for my long-term strategy with them, I don't know. But for now, it means we're a bit happier. I've also got 177 diplomatic favor. That's pretty cool. I have enjoyed that. That is a large amount and is a good thing. Let's get another apostle. Whoa, Germany's on 465 culture. That's pretty ridiculous. Oh, there's education, by the way. We can get a university very quickly. It's worth, oh, six science. Oh, we're beelining now towards 100 science per turn. Still a long, long way behind the AI, but it's all that we need. I'm going to just actually go siege tactics as well to try and get Renaissance walls for some more diplomatic favor. The diplomacy victory, we cannot forget about. That is going to be very important for us. Um, this is minus eight. I'm not sure I necessarily believe that, so we're just going to go for it. There's only two population city that. So we're going to just suggest it's not that bad. No, it's not that bad. It's okay. We'll do some quick chopping, but this is a city well over to the left of my empire and gives me access to a whole new sea. 
have an old god obelisk. Oh, a sight for sore eyes. Look at that. Mongolia has just got slightly positive on loyalty, but that's only because they've got the governor in that city now. Second World Congress, and the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that Mahabodhi Temple has pretty much been stolen from me, which is a bit of a problem. I didn't build it quick enough. D to be fair, I didn't really have the production to do it right now, so I, I kind of let it go deliberately. But looking at this, I've got 190 favor. I reckon we've got a decent shot at this one. I'm going to vote for myself on border control. I like having culture bombs that tends to be fairly easy to go through now it's always minus 50 percent on mercenary companies the ai love more units the choice can split though i'm gonna go production normally the ai is fairly favorable to getting production but it can often be a little bit weird to go for it four votes on this one five votes on this one i'm hoping we should have fair luck with that they're fairly easy predictable ones yeah look there we go the ai really doesn't care about border control the reason I put four votes into that rather than just putting the one is sometimes the AI will double up on somebody. It can be a little bit weird. Say, for instance, they go into option B. So, you know, for the sake of a few diplomatic favor, it's worth just not risking it. And here we go. You can see the production, 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 gold, gold, gold. Fairly even split. We were basically the deciding weight on that one, but that's... That's fine, it's done. Now, trade route wise, I've got six to myself and four to either city states I'm suzerain of or allies. So I'm thinking Thistlebanken might not be a bad shout here. Remember, Thistlebanken, when it says the four food and four production, it never introduces the yields from routes to city states. I don't know what the mod doesn't like about it, but it doesn't like it. I'm also going to pivot quite a lot now. Now that the World Congress is made units cheaper, I'm actually going to step away from reducing settlers. I'll put this banking in for now. That's fine. But we're going to see if we can produce a little bit of an army. And I'm thinking ahead, right? So first of all, we're going for siege tactics because I want Renaissance walls. Renaissance walls mean that I can get a whole bunch of extra uh, diplomatic favor. There's currently 18 on the table, but I haven't got 18 per turn. is a huge amount. But then I can go for things like uh, rushing towards industrialization and then flight for the observation balloons. I want to go for a bit of a bombard strike. Bombards with observation balloons and crusade should be plenty to take care of Mongolia. We have about 10 turns of this friendship left. It could be a little bit delayed before we get anywhere near this one. I mean, I could in theory also cross the sea and go for Georgia. Georgia is by far the weakest. Uh, still 46 population. That would almost double my population in my nation, which is, is definitely worth a, a look. It also give me a foothold on that continent. But either way, I want to make sure that I have a lot of production towards military units. So siege equipment is absolutely going to be something I look to prioritize here. That's another trade route though. Look at that. That is another trade route. If I look at available routes, let's just see how many I've got to my capital that I can still do. Oh, okay. There's two cities that I've got that can still trade with the capital. Tushpa. Actually, that would help with the loyalty over there. That's pretty cool. And Parsa. This would put loyalty pressure on Mongolia. I like that as an idea more. Mausoleum at Halicarnassus in my Pingala city as well. Science, faith, culture, but more importantly, more district capacity. I've been holding on to a great engineer for this very reason, so that is lovely. Extra engineer charges come in handy every single game you play. And look at this, my capital can now boost printing, which is good. We can also do one other district now. I'm going to go for the industrial zone first and then the campus, I think. Although I could go now also for diplomatic quarter. Diplomatic quarter, of course, is very, very handy for the trade routes coming into the city because I believe, again, it's one food and one production, whereas the industrial zone is only one production, I believe. Yeah, it is. So do you want to put a campus in? There's a lot of stuff I want to put in this city, to be honest. There's a plus three campus over there. Hmm. Actually, if I just lock that tile in thinking about it that will become a plus four so then i could put diplomatic no there's no point there's no point i'll save that plus four for a better city so yeah we'll go diplomatic quarter and industrial zone i'll do it probably in that order because the industrial zone will give me more production towards the next, uh, next district but it's all good one more settler is there anywhere i can settle that will give me a distinct luxury advantage anything i can sell to people anything that i can take to the open market a lot of the best spots have already been taken, to be honest. Maybe the other side of this continent, there's a lot of barbarians protecting it. That's the only issue I've got right now. Over here, actually. Give me a bit of loyalty pressure. Yeah, you know what? Go go in this direction. Oh, man, I really need to learn how to sail over the ocean. That would be a bit handy, wouldn't it? I believe, though, that's city number 10. Oh, look, Halicarnassus. 
It's not in the same city, but it's kind of close. Hey, you know what? We'll take it. It's close enough for me. I just told, uh, sold those two new luxuries for about 800 gold. That's pretty good. It means I can now afford my two new lighthouses, which means two new trade routes. Ah, I love trade routes. Trade routes are fun, especially given the ridiculous yield bonuses that I'm producing to my capital right now. They're only going to get better as well. That's the fun thing here. Ooh, someone just stole 200 gold from the city. I mean, that's my only commercial hub. How dare you? How very dare you? Uh, Reformed Church has just given me the option and ability to... I mean, Republican Legacy Serfdom... Serfdom's quite good. I'm gonna get rid of it just briefly for religious orders because I see an opening with the Ottomans here. They've got a couple of gurus still in their land that are refusing to move, which is relatively amusing. I do have a debating apostle, but I just can't quite get enough damage on it. It's stood in a place that's very difficult to get to, but if I can get this kill... Be relatively entertaining. Let's see if we can just do the damage. Okay, it might heal itself, but it's worth a go. It's absolutely worth a go. Look at this as well. Look at that trade route. Oh, yeah. That's pretty yummy. Oh, that's even better. Me settling here. Oh, <laughs> the Ottomans have just settled there as well. But me settling here has actually caused the loyalty pressure to go berserk. So I'm going to pick up two, three cities from the Ottomans here. That's wonderful. Admittedly, they are in a dark age, but this city should flip before the end of this era, I'm hoping. Oh, I love these appeal tiles. It's such good synergy. Just pop the Alcazar on it for some science and culture, and then right next to it, put my Pedreza down and increase the science even more. Oh, I'm getting such crazy. Like, I'm probably about a quarter of my science right now is just from this little synergy. It, it, it's wonderful. I love it. Yeah, look, they healed themselves, but... I don't think that's enough to stop me from getting the kill. Hopefully I get the kill. Yeah, bam. There we go. Look, just spreads my religion around a little bit. We are just infiltrating very slowly, very methodically. Let's get a... Do we need a guru? I can just come back and heal, can't I? I'd rather actually pick up the apostles right now. That's where my golden age is. Whilst I think I might be able to scrape up one more apostle in this golden age. These religious units are going to come and be very handy for pretty much the rest of the game. Look, at just look at these deals. Oh, they're so good. Right, how lucky did I get on Nitre? Please be... Yeah, it's relatively lucky. I actually have one source of the stuff. Uh, you know what? I'll take it. It could be a lot worse. Could be a lot worse. Let's go. Let's go hook it up immediately. Um, because of that, so I want to go for Bombards. I think I'd rather build tre Trebuchets are cheaper right now. So that Trebuchet is finishing off. It'll finish off next time, which means I've only got to upgrade one of these. There you go, let's just see the promotion, and bam! Uh, next turn, we'll get the Siege Tactics boost. I I'm pretty sure every single cut of this game is going to be just mar marvelling at these trade routes, but they, they just don't get old. And they're going to keep getting better, because my capital is just going to keep getting better. New Apostle, what's this one got? Triple spread, eh? I reckon we can convert Istanbul. Hee <laughs> hee hee! That's their holy city. If we do that, we should force them to come and uh, and sort of attack. That's a missionary. Uh, with these sort of uh, religious fights, I tend to not pick a fight until I know that I can kill the unit. Feels a bit weird sometimes, but for me, it's it's just good because I can I can just force myself because because otherwise you, you damage a missionary and it'll hide in a city and you can never get it. Whereas if you don't damage it, it's more likely just to be running around and being silly. Look, it's just headed over in that direction. That siege tactics boosted. Mercantilism. Is is with me. Religious orders, I'm going to keep that just for a little bit. Where did the missionary go? I should be faster. Oh, there's the missionary. Okay, cool. I'll just start chasing it, see if we can catch up with it in a second. All the while, my conversion apostle is going to go bam. Hehehe, <laughs> four era score. That'll lure them all out. Now the Ottomans will be desperate to convert their holy city back. All the while, I'm just pumping trebuchets out. These are just sort of the, the easy little gains, but this is where I just casually and slowly, every two turns, pop a trebuchet out. These cities both have stables in. Got another one that can do it here. I can build up like eight or nine trebuchets and then unlock observation balloons. Yeah, we should be laughing. I'm even taking the time to build up a bit of a navy. Uh, Tarsus, again, is just like, you know, galleys every two turns. It's much easier to have the units and then upgrade them later, I find. Another lighthouse. Don't mind if I do. Interesting. The missionary has hidden inside the encampment. This is what I was talking about, but what we'll do. So I'll just move my religious units to lurk around it. 
in various easy to get places. As soon as it pops out, I should be able to take it on and destroy it. And the longer they leave me to walk around, the more cities I'm going to convert with my super converter apostle. So, you know, we can play the waiting game. I don't mind that at all. As the envoys come in, I'm just making sure that I'm upping the useful things. to Ruga, for instance, and Shen, both of those adding two science to a university. I've got a university. I never won, but I will get more eventually. Uh, especially because this city in Tarsus can get one very soon. Ho 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 ho, that's all looking really good. Although, I think I should probably get shrines and temples as a priority because they, uh, the faith obviously is converting to all the other yields for me. So, I like that. Rifling boosted! Niter! I'm really kind of a bit disappointed by the lack of Niter. Can I go and settle on more? I mean, Mongolia's got some. Oh, there's some in the middle of the island there. There's some over there. I could grab it if I wanted to. It's fine. Renaissance era siege tactics. There we go. Renaissance walls are now possible. I think I've still got the letter, haven't I? So I could be using my faith income to get walls. It's not ideal, but it is possible. We'll kind of keep that in mind. As long as I've got limes, kind of makes sense to build them. Plus the World Congress occasionally will come through and build city center buildings faster, which can often be quite useful as well. So we'll hang on to some ideas here. Here we go. This is what I mean. They couldn't help themselves. Just by backing off, giving the missionary a little space, we have lured it out. So we can go one attack with my debater, and then we're going to do a little bit of damage to the rest of my apostles, but we'll get the kill. And look at that. We've already converted two more cities over to the cause. Yes. That's right, that's right. If we can convert everything over, then that's going to be one major religion taken out. It looks like Islam has kind of petered itself out. Ottomans have a big one, Ethiopia has a big one, and then Georgia as well. That's all over the other continent, don't care about that. Whatever's happening on that continent, I can do whatever it wants. Watch as that diplomatic quarter gets put down. Let's just check in with some of these trade routes, shall we? Let's just get this one. Nine food, eight production to the capital. Oh, yes. That's what you like to see, isn't it? Now, a workshop would help me to build other things, and I actually do have a couple... No, just the one industrial city-state, but that will help a lot. Workshop, consulate... I mean, look at that building there. That was worth... It's four gold, six science, four culture, two faith. Yeah, that's pretty good. So you're going to save my... Let's just, just buy those things in. For now, I think I could probably build some more army in this city. Is that going to be worth it? No, let's get the consulate first. I love it in these stages of the games when you've got about five things you want to build all at the same time and they're all worth it. Like this lighthouse, four turns. Let's get that done quickly. There's another city converted. <laughs> okay, right. I might just uh, go and let these units heal briefly. I can still get across the sea nice and quick. This has been this has been quite the fruitful little religious excursion. Now, to get the religious victory, I think I'm going to combine the religious victory in the domination victory a little bit. If I take over the world, I can inquisit the religion easier from my own cities then I can try to convert other religions. I think I might do that. I think I'll, I'll just save my religion to be spreading whilst I'm at war, and that will help me to crusade, but there's no, there's no real reason to rush it otherwise. Fairly happy with how things are. I'm getting really good diplomatic favor. That's good. Babylon still gets quite a bit per turn as well, which is a little bit perturbing, but we'll forgive them for now. Religious orders, yeah, we'll get rid of that for now. Public works, back in you get, oh, triangular trade is worth so much gold. I'm going to put that in instead of Vissel Banken as much as it pains me. Merchant Confederation is also worth a ton as well. So let's pop that in. I'm also going to then put the... Where's the boat card in? Maritime Industries instead of Veteran... No, Veterancy is doing quite well for me actually because I am building encampment buildings and, and harbours pretty much everywhere. So we'll save that. Oh, Ottomans have gone heroic. Okay, well that's that's fine I guess. What's going to help with the war? What's going to help with the war with Mongolia? I think probably reform the coinage. That stops people from plundering my trade routes. Uh, I don't have many international routes, but I have some. Uh, I'm not going to focus on that. It's mainly the non-plundering thing. Although, is Mogadishu in the game? It is. Hmm. Difficult to get, but I could steal Mogadishu. Hicksandra Connors gives me a lot more settling capacity. Monumentality means obviously I can get more builders out, which would help my empire to grow. I'll go Monumentality. I, I feel like then we can just sort of focus on the growth. How's the... Oh, these cities are going to just about keep loyal. That's a bit annoying. 
that's okay. I reckon we can probably push them over as long as we as we settle cleverly. I might be able to settle round the back actually here uh, and, and, and push. But my faith can now be used on getting the infrastructure. So stuff like this armory, gunpowder boosted. I've got two armories that can be built in my southern cities as they're producing units. As you can see, we've already got five trebuchets up. We can get more than that. We can get much more than that. And we're going to need much more than that to take on Mongolia. <laughs> Let me tell you. There is a new batch of city-state quests though. What is this one? Eureka for astronomy. Have a university next to a mountain. That one is a metal casting is the other one as well. Own two crossbows. I know I'm not crossbows. No, I haven't because I haven't got three archers. Whoa, it's blowing my mind. Quickly, let's just get one archer there and we'll pick up one archer there. And we've got another one to promote there. I should get that quickly. That has blown my mind. Fair enough. Oh, and as mentioned before, Liang. I was going to get Liang in just to make sure that we had at least one person with builds. Oh, that's if he's on zero loyalty. That's amazing. I don't know how you're hanging on, but you are. And I will leave it at that. Why did I put the diplomatic quarter on that tile? Why did they why did they do that? Oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> I meant to put it there. Oh dear. My capital's not getting a campus, everyone. It's it's not happening. Well that's a bit frustrating, because that was my next to a mountain campus. <laughs> what a numpty. Oh dear, I gotta build a campus somewhere else. Actually, this city's probably the one for it, because it can get a plus three next to a mountain there. Yeah, I'll um We'll work on that. I'll get a builder in the city, start chopping things down, rush the campus along. That'll get the university, that'll get the astronomy boost. Oh yes, the loyalty pressure on this Mongolian city starting to tell now. That's good. Helps a little bit. So many people are just running away with elements of this game though. It's, it's pretty unnerving. 41 techs for Babylon to my 27, so there's still 14 techs ahead. Ethiopia are 10 ahead. Genghis is still six techs ahead of me. Don't like that. So we're building up a bit of an army. It's just that I'm not sure my army is going to be as good as it needs to be to take on Mongolia. But sometimes optimism and sunny thoughts. These are the only things that I can send. Oh, yeah, Mongolia keeps getting rid of their military as well. They keep pushing it up to about 400, 500, and then it keeps going down unexpectedly. I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to just assume that it's all well and that there's nothing for me to worry about at all. Germany and Congo have just gone to war. Interesting. Sorry, Mongolia. You've got 63 population to my 72. You've got 12 cities. I uh, I need your land. I, I feel bad betraying you like this, but uh, I am building up to a war and I cannot accept that friendship from you right now. I did have I realized that most of the world is at war. It's it's incredible. Like it, everyone's fighting each other right now. And I'm just sort of sat here being like, yeah, sure. But um, I don't want to fight. All I'm doing is just getting trade route after trade route with city states to get more and more envoys. All of the quests. And Shen is one I need to send out now. Oh, and actually a workshop in my capital as well. That'll help the consulate to be built a bit faster. And actually now that trebuchets, I've got quite a few of them. I need a bit of a land army. Mongolia sends cavalry. That's that's quite, uh, quite a sort of predictable element, I would guess. So I'm going to start to send a few pikemen to the front line as well. They can be upgraded a little bit later. What's more important, actually, do I unlock bombards and pike and shop before going for industrialization yeah no i think i do i've kind of answered my question there um let's get some better troops i think pike and shot are going to stand up to mongolia a lot better these are very important things aid request yes i want to get involved in that religious emergency i'm gonna not vote on that very heavily if that goes through that's not a bad thing for me because there's still the bug in the game Ah, oh, alas, there's still the bug in the game where if you gain a religious emergency, every time you conquer a city, you get a big burst of religious pressure. Don't know why that's still in the game. The aid request has gone through towards Georgia. You know what this calls for. Hello, Georgia. Have one gold. <laughs> Always works. Always works. As long as you're not contributing CO2 into the atmosphere, the AI has no idea how to contribute towards aid projects. They always struggle with it. It's always relatively amusing. I'm going to just keep everyone allied. I don't want to denounce Mongolia just yet. I feel like as soon as I do, they're going to start generating military. Although, again, their military just keeps bouncing around, up and down, up and down. I don't know what they're doing. Oh, forms an armada. Yep, yep, yep. That is an admiral that I can get on board with. And an ironclad would be helpful as well oh it's a shame the ottomans are going to win that admiral but that would have been quite handy never mind so yeah even in a heroic age the ottomans are going to lose this city to me and this one just needs a little bit of a nudge so what i'm going to do 
is nudge it. I think I've got enough stuff to chop here to make this relatively entertaining. I'm just wondering whether or not settling on this towel would be better because then I can double canal and always always think of the canals people always think of the canals but actually there's a good chunk of chopping that I can do here as well so yeah we'll give this a go another old god obelisk doing the lord's work for me there's gunpowder excellent I just need to get some crossbow in now like one and then two there you go perfect nationalism that's cause we are definitely now building up to something big I'm thinking I do want to get a good war going so we're going to denounce Mongolia and do this properly I may regret I may regret this course of action but sometimes you have to take the bold moves you know you have to go for it to see what what sticks what doesn't here we go just to put the pressure on Hal up as well I'm gonna start increasing my population don't worry about it it's absolutely fine I'm also going to now go and send an apostle over to convert Hal up to my religion <laughs> my first renaissance wall as well can be finished do I do that? It's worth two diplomatic favor per turn. So I think the answer is yes. Tell you what, one of the options I was really considering with this sort of playthrough was going Georgia. Because Georgia have such a good Renaissance wall upgrade. You can get the diplomatic favor, but also a bunch of faith as well. The tourism's good. It's just a really, really good combination. It's very tempting. I realize um, your Babylon have got steel walls. Don't don't think about that too much. It's uh, turn 133. It, it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Who is Genghis Khan's allies here? Taruga. That would be a good steal for me to pick them up. An extra 5% science as well in cities with strategics. It's a little bit, but it's mainly just the removal of Genghis as an ally. Yeah, these cavalry corps. They are they, they are scary. Uh, plus 24 intel on opponents' movements, everybody. Plus 24. Okay. That's fun. That's that's a lot of fun. So that is because they have a trade route with me. They've obviously got... Which city even is it that's got the trader in it? I think it's actually this one. So that's the trading hub. That's plus 12. I think they've got printing. That's 18. And maybe they've got a spy? Or did they get something that have given them more visibility i don't know how to be honest i don't know how the modded version of mongolia no actually no i do i played with them before hang on yeah because you chain up the trade routes to really silly things don't you yeah but there's an extra thing there maybe they've got a spy they could have a spy with me that could be it but yeah plus 24 that's um that's a bit too much even if i take off the 24 my pikemen are not strong enough so we've got to get some pike and shot cores ourselves i'm working on a spy i'm gonna send a spy over to mongolia to help might need to go metal casting printing there's so many diversions but we, we're doing it we're, we're getting what we can oh a delegation it's delegation that's what it is okay we'll we'll lose that that's fine it's actually good to know for later so there's a genghis khan trading post in that city but not i believe in any other city i don't think they actually got around to building one in any other city there is a bit of a scorched earth policy i could play here i could in theory give this city away if the war was getting too much and the, and the combat bonus was was too difficult to defeat I, it, i've never even considered doing that before but it is technically an option oh man it feels it feels mad to even consider it but but it is a it, it is possible i could just give the city away just like nah doesn't doesn't mean a thing to me one more campus is ready which means i can finally get this boost jerusalem kamasi nan nadal all boosted by the presence of a university next to a mountain beautiful 195 science as well our science output's pretty decent if it wasn't for the fact that uh three people are above 300 in fact actually germany is now almost at 400 germany is having a game yeah apart from that i don't have to worry um apart, apart from the inevitable panic that i will eventually be feeling i don't have to worry What's going to be most useful against Mongolia? Borrowing the army of the city-states around or getting better spy capacity or being able to buy troops? In? I think getting troops in later. It, I, I, every game I have the Grandmaster's Chapel. There's, it's very rare. Very rare I ever regret getting it. It's always very, very handy. Go on, Mongolia. Give the city up. There we go. You don't want it. Now, the only problem is that the Mongolian cavalry are technically strong enough to steal the city within the 10 turns. What I'm hoping is it very much distracts their units for a little bit. 
Plus we're printing. This is actually a good opportunity to level my units up a little bit and start shooting this city. I mean, admittedly, Mongolia might pick it back up, but ultimately, then we can do this. Oh, look, that cavalry. Yeah, plus 18. That's uh, that's looking a little bit better. But the upgrade to Pike and Shot and then the reduction in that bonus from Mongolia has just, just meant that I feel a little safer. Just a tiny bit safer now. What is the best Mongolian city to wait in? They're all seven turns. That's annoying. In their capital? Yeah, capital's going to be difficult to take. So over to the capital. All I need is diplomatic visibility. That's all we're going for right now. How many more turns of units? We've got 11 turns of units. Yeah, I've been putting off a lot of other infrastructure, but it's just getting the number of actual units on the board. The main, the main priority for me. I just, I just need as many units as I can because I can always upgrade them. I can always heal them. Let's uh, see how aggressively Mongolia are going to go about getting back this free city. I'm hoping it won't be too bad. They just move their units around a little bit fluffily. That could help. Nationalism. Excellent. I don't need public works anymore. Limes is always useful, but I don't need that for now. What we're going to do is just switch over to the combat mode. Professional army retinues and then raj oh look at that look at all those yields 14 gold science culture and faith as well as all trade routes to city states getting an extra two gold per turn just a little bit of everything is what you need up to 200 science per turn now that is lovely and finally a very special shout out goes to glorious petra matthew wilkinson paul coffee portland scott stratton major king kong davalek skeptical bear kroger brand trail mix alex noob cinnamon beard petra ryan matthew hatch rom 88 radio torre private selection genoa salami boys oro callum billy garrett gowan polar bear ray el truant creston rb hedged mushkin mandeltort esri dax debel time shoelace berry I'm Daft, Gooberman, Clint Tennis, Dr. Bobby, Polar Wallabear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!